Happening now, the latest on a fatal train accident here in Chautauqua County. Police just identifying the victim. Plus, we what we know about a raging wildfire in Warren County, County Pennsylvania. Well, that sunshine is all gone for today, being replaced with clouds and a little bit of rain is going to be on the way. How much? We'll tell you about it next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now on this Friday. I'm Justin Gould. Police have identified the woman who was struck and killed by a train in Westfield yesterday afternoon. The Westfield Police Department saying 62-year-old Dixie Smith of Sherman was last seen walking on the CSX railroad tracks around 3.15 in the afternoon before she was hit. Police say Smith was located underneath the train and later pronounced deceased by the Chautauqua County coroner. Investigators tell us they were able to identify her after locating her vehicle nearby. An initial search for Smith took place between North Gale and Franklin Streets in the village shortly after the incident was phoned in to emergency services. The Westfield, Mayville and Portland Fire Departments utilized all-terrain vehicles in that search. The Westfield Police Department is now being assisted by the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office in their ongoing investigation. Well, a wildfire near Warren, Pennsylvania has burned over 100 acres in the Allegheny National Forest. The U.S. Department of Forestry saying the fire started midday yesterday northeast of Titiut before spreading to the forest by mid-afternoon. Titiut and other volunteer fire departments, the Bureau of Forest and Forest Services worked together to contain the flames there. First responders fought that fire from the air using a single-engine air tanker, a reconnaissance plane, and a helicopter with a water bucket as well. Forest firefighters continued to monitor the wildfire overnight. With crews returning to the area this morning, the cause of that blaze still remains unknown. Well, youth sports and after-school activities appear to be causing COVID clusters. That's according to the CDC. After several coronavirus outbreaks have been linked to schools, tournaments, or other extracurricular activities. Steve Nanez has a closer look, including some recommendations from health experts to keep your kids safe. Youth sports may be one factor fueling the latest spread of COVID-19. The CDC now says youth tournaments and extracurricular activities are creating clusters where coronavirus can spread among children. We're working to facilitate increased testing that is happening um, on the ground in the context of youth sports. Health officials say as kids continue to play indoor sports like basketball, hockey and wrestling, it's causing an increase in COVID-19 cases in some parts of the U.S. We are seeing a higher proportion of younger people who are getting ill and unfortunately getting hospitalized. In Florida, the CDC reports the virus was linked to high school wrestling tournaments in December where 38 people were infected. And in Minnesota, officials there say the B117 variant, first found in the UK, spread through one county where at least 68 cases were linked to youth sporting events. School sports, particularly team sports, which people engage in close contact without masks. I think that is what is explaining these surges of cases in young individuals. So what do you do if you have kids in sports? The CDC recommends minimizing the time spent indoors and reduce the amount of time players spend in close contact with each other. I'm Steve Nannis. All right, Steve, thank you. Health experts also recommend having children play outdoors whenever possible and not share water bottles. The B117 COVID variant was originally found in the United Kingdom and is about 50% more infectious than any other strain of the virus, according to researchers. Well, back here at home, Jamestown City Democrats have filed petitions for a replacement candidate for late Councilwoman Vicki James on this year's ballot. According to the Chautauqua County Board of Elections website, Regina Brockman will now run for the Ward 3 seat this fall. Brockman's candidacy comes after James' untimely death in March. Brockman will run against Republican Robert Reedy for that seat. Meanwhile, Doomstown Mayor Eddie Sunquist will need to appoint a fill-in for Ward 3's seat for the remainder of the term. Sunquist is required to appoint a Democrat since that was James's party. Brockman narrowly lost to Republican Tamara Dickey in 2013 for the seat. 
Now, WNY News Now's Matt Hummel is reporting the mayor's office is currently working on assembling a press conference to discuss filling that position sometime next week. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now. As we get a check of uh, local news headlines this afternoon, let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. It's uh, good to see Pam, good to see uh, Butch, Kevin, uh, Lori, Sandy, Wendy, and Joseph as well. Hopefully you all are having a good day out there. And uh, one of the things uh, giving us some great news this afternoon is the weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joining us live with that. Happy uh, Friday to you, Dakota. Happy Friday, Justin. I mean, we made it through the end of another work week. And boy, I mean, you know, the sun is gone. I mean, all that sunshine we had, it's out of here. But the temperatures are still relatively mild. 63 at uh, the uh, Chautauqua Institution right now. And you can see some of those clouds just kind of hanging overhead. We had a little bit of light rain showers, just a small little bit. But there's going to be a chance for a few more later on in the afternoon. It was a windy day yesterday. 26 was the peak wind gust at the uh, Jamestown Airport, which is located north of the city. Dunkirk had a peak wind gust of 25. And uh, the winds are still going to remain a little bit breezy through the day today. On the radar, not a whole lot showing up, but you will see a few of those little scattered showers moving across uh, the uh, northwestern part of Pennsylvania coming up into extreme uh, eastern uh, Cattaraugus County and then going into Allegheny County. Nothing across the western southern tier, but again, there will be the chance for a few scattered showers later this afternoon. 78 was the high yesterday. My goodness, did you get out and enjoy it? It felt so good. The average was 53. 79 is the record for this date, set in 2001, and 12 in 1977 broke the record low. So through the afternoon today, just a small chance for a, for a spotty shower. Otherwise, partly to mostly uh, sunny, cooler, but still a bit mild with a healthy breeze, 62 to 71. And look at that south wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now, tomorrow is going to be another great day, then a little bit more rain for the second half of the weekend. Plus, do we hang on to those warmer temperatures into next week. I'll tell you about it in detail with that 42 degrees and sunny seven day forecast later in the show, Justin. All right. Well, uh, Dakota will definitely keep tuned to that. Thank you. The Albany Times Union is reporting that several of Governor Cuomo's staff say their work on his book, American Crisis, was not completely voluntary. Previously, a spokesperson for the governor said the agreement was legal and that the work was performed voluntarily. But according to the Times Union, the staff making those new claims say the work was expected and that agreements related to the book were normal. Others said the work was not optional. Cuomo's book hit the shelves last year and has been the subject of some controversy surrounding the alleged staffer that worked on it. In the wake of Cuomo's growing scandal, New York State Senator George Borrello has pushed legislation barring elected officials from publishing books about their public service while still in office. New York State Congressman Lee Zedlin is planning to run for governor in 2022. The Republican announced his bid on Twitter yesterday. Zedlin represents most of Long Island. He says he'll bring a fighting spirit to save the state from embattled Governor Andrew Cuomo. Current Governor Cuomo faces a slew of sexual harassment accusations against him, and he has not announced whether he plans to seek a fourth term yet. Other Republicans who have said they are considering seeking the Republican nomination for governor include Andrew Giuliani, the son of former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, and the former aide in the administration of President Donald Trump. Next here, a lot more to tell you about the latest into a fatal plane crash in Cattaraugus County. And later, we go live to the Chautauqua County Humane Society for our Pet of the Week segment. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues on this Friday afternoon. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. 
EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Honest John says what you're looking for. When you want it good, we're going to give you lots more. From freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has what you're looking for. And now two great locations, East 2nd Street and Fairmount Avenue. Order takeout or delivery today online at honestjohns.pizza. You're gonna get it good at Honest John's. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well. It's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community. Stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to WNY News Now. The man who died during a plane crash in Cattaraugus County this week has been identified. The Cattaraugus County Sheriff's Office telling us 80-year-old William Mandela of Brockport died after his small plane crashed into a field just off the runway of the Great Valley Airport. The crash, which happened Wednesday afternoon, hospitalized 72-year-old Raymond Garish of Brockport, who was flown via Mercy Flight to ECMC. Deputies say that man is currently in critical condition. The cause of the crash remains under investigation by the Sheriff's Office with the help of the NTSB and the FAA. However, preliminary findings appear to show a problem occurred during takeoff. Well, Congressman Tom Reed is no longer serving as the co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus. Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick of Bucks County, Pennsylvania, has been elected to replace Reed as the co-chair of that bipartisan group. The caucus says Reed will remain an active member of the group and be part of their multi-month transition, helping ensure the caucus continues its mission of bipartisan governing. Reed announced last month that he's not going to seek re-election in 2022 after a former lobbyist accused him of sexual misconduct. Nicolette Davis t telling the Washington Post uh, Minneapolis bar Reed in 2017 briefly fumbled with her bra before unhooking the clasp of it and moving his hands to touch her thighs. Now, last fall, Reed was elected to his fourth term in Congress representing the 23rd Congressional District, receiving 57 percent of the vote over Democrat challenger Tracy Matrano in a rematch from the race in 2018. Well, President Joe Biden says he wants action on gun control while he waits for Congress to pass legislation. He announced yesterday several executive actions to he, that he says will help. But he's stressing now it's not enough. Nadia Romero with what the executive order will entail. After several recent mass shootings and no consensus from Congress on how to respond. Enough, enough, enough. President Joe Biden announced Thursday he's taking action. This is an epidemic, for God's sake, and it has to stop. At a Rose Garden event, Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland laid out several executive actions that the White House says will help curb gun violence. It is a problem that we must all work on together in a collective effort to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and save lives. Among the proposed new steps, restricting so-called ghost guns built from parts bought online, targeting braces for pistols by requiring them to be registered, and new investments in intervention programs in violence-prone areas. But the actions fall short of what Biden hoped Congress would address. They've offered plenty of thoughts and prayers, members of Congress, but they've passed not a single new federal law to reduce gun violence. Enough prayers. Time for some action. The moves come after deadly mass shootings in Georgia and Colorado in recent weeks. The White House says it hopes more will be done. Whether Congress acts or not, I'm going to use all the resources at my disposal as president to keep the American people safe from gun violence. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. 
Nadia, thank you. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is calling Biden's move an attempt to trample over our constitutional and Second Amendment rights, which Biden now refuting. Well, Chautauqua County's longtime director of mental hygiene services is retiring. Patricia Brinkman has held the job since 2000, working to help those facing mental health and substance abuse challenges. Her work, spanning more than two decades, has advanced the county's support services with the director working behind the scenes to increase revenue generated by health clinics, state and federal funding through grants. By establishing financial stability for that department, Brinkman and her staff have been able to expand its services over the years. Most recently, the county launched a new website, chqaddiction.org, to help those struggling with substance abuse find help here locally. Brinkman's last day in office is today, and she says she plans to remain a county resident and focus more on her husband and family, as well as write a little bit and considering some volunteer activities and looking forward to traveling once it's safe to do so. Certainly congratulations on your retirement. We thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we get a check of uh, some local headlines this afternoon. Let us know uh, what you think about these stories and more in the comments below or simply uh, send us a wave and say hello. It's uh, great to see Mike. Uh, good to see you on the broadcast. Thanks so much for chiming in. Great to see uh, Willie, David, uh, Shelly, and Roseanne as well. Hopefully you're having a good day. Good afternoon to Don. Uh, great to see you as well. We appreciate seeing so many uh, uh, friendly faces every day on the show and uh, tuning in for what I'd say is probably uh, one of Jamestown's best sources for local news. Maybe I'm a little biased on that, though, Dakota. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. Uh, and the weather the last couple days has really been gorgeous, my friend. Thank you for that. I know in the end you're just the messenger, but mm. I imagine you probably get some good vibes on the social feeds, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, seeing everybody going out and, you know, actually enjoying the nice weather that we have right now, it's great because, you know, the temperatures have been about 15 to 25 degrees above average to where we should be for this time of the year. And as we know, April, we can often get snow. Speaking of snow, wanted to show you how long it's been since we've had one inch of snow here in town. We have to go all the way back to the 22nd of March. That was 18 days ago where we had one inch of snow on the ground. So it seems like an eternity that we've not had snow around here. But shh, maybe if we don't mention anything, maybe we won't get any more. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you haven't already noticed while you're driving your car, yeah, pothole season is here, unfortunately. So again, you know, we showed this before, wanted to kind of show it again to kind of uh, help you understand that potholes, of course, you know, the winter is very harsh on our roads here, but uh, also the spring season also doesn't do our roads much good either because the uh, warmer temperatures by day and the colder temperatures by night help aid in the pothole process. So ultimately potholes form when the water seeps down in into the pavement by night into the cracks ice forms underneath as the road as the ground conditions underneath are still often frozen causing the road to crumble and break apart and therefore you get those dreaded potholes uh, that you often get so unfortunately that time has come and yeah we're going to start seeing all the road crews on the roads pretty soon doing some stuff on the roadway 61 as a noon hour right now a little bit more clouds uh, downtown than we had at this hour uh, yesterday healthy south wind of 14 got a wind gust of 23 and obviously with the dew point and the humidity still relatively low we don't have a uh, wind chill index or a, a heat index that we have to contend with nothing showing up on the radar locally here but there is a few returns going up towards rochester monroe county going up towards lake ontario that will not impact us through the day so this big old storm system, it's a classic comma. Notice the comma head shape to the uh, satellite imagery here. This is the storm system that's pulling up into the upper Great Lakes, and we're actually on the outer edge of this storm system. So that's why we're wrapped up in the cloudiness because low pressure spins counterclockwise. So we're uh, uh, wrapped up in the low, the flow around the low that's moving towards the uh, upper Great Lakes. So we will see a chance for a few rain showers. Futures can paints that idea pretty well. I don't think we're gonna see as heavy uh, uh, as heavy intensity as what's being uh, depicted here, but there will be a few scattered showers through the afternoon and especially this evening clears out tonight. Tomorrow, a stunner of a day. If you liked yesterday, 
that's basically going to be the same thing for tomorrow. Mid to upper 70s, a good supply of sunshine. As we head into Sunday, another storm system pulling up into the upper Great Lakes will actually bring us a chance for a few more rain showers early on Sunday. So here's the uh, golfers forecast for tomorrow. So if you want to get out and hit the links tomorrow, fantastic. Good supply of sunshine, 56 at 9 to around 77 at 3. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, we have storm spotter training at 11 a.m. It's a morning session tomorrow, and this is free to attend. To register, go to weather.gov slash buf slash skyward please uh, attend a, a storm spotter training session we need more spotters because again radar is a great tool but it only shows us what's at the ground but it shows us what's above the ground not at the ground that's where the spotters come in next seven days of your life brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny 79 tomorrow the record is 82 set in 1945 again don't think we'll break it but it's still going to be a nice warm day 70 on sunday a few rain showers then temperatures go down the opposite direction here back to reality with a few scattered rain showers pretty much almost every day next week with temperatures moderating into the mid to lower 50s we'll take a break be right back First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny. Smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. It's not just what we say, it's what we do. Local first. It isn't just our slogan. It's our mindset every single day. So whether you're watching our daily live streams or staying up to date with reports on our website and mobile app, you'll always see the same attention to detail from reporters who passionately care about our community, who have one goal in mind, to always put the facts first. For me, it's more than just getting the forecast right. What I love the most about my job is that I come into work every day to help break down the weather, letting people know how this is going to impact their day. We take pride that First Defense Weather is the only local weather team in the Southern Tier. We don't just copy and paste our weather from outside sources. Every part of our forecast is handmade right here in-house, something our team really takes pride in. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Slow down. Slow down and move over. Move over. When you see signs, lights, vests, please give us some room. Slow down. Slow down and move over. When you need help, it's our job to help you. To save you. Despite the danger. This danger. This danger is real. Do your part. Please. Slow down. Slow down. And move over. Move over. With coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. Hey, welcome back to WNY News Now. In an effort to help our furry friends find a forever home, we're partnered with the Chautauqua County Humane Society and my favorite segment, the Pet of the Week. Joining us live is Amanda Sublet to talk more about this week's featured furry friend. And uh, she's coming from their uh, special spot at the Chautauqua Mall. Happy Friday, Amanda. Hey there. Uh, so today I have with me my friend Oscar. He's looking for a home this weekend at the mall, like you just said, from 12 to 4 tomorrow. We'll be here and open to visitors. Can you turn your nose around? There you go. He is such a gentle soul. He loves to cuddle. He loves attention. So sweet. Wish he'd stand up because he's got this really curly tail that I've been telling everybody I love. But he really just wants somebody to play with. Yeah, absolutely. How, how is he with uh, with other pets? Does does he uh, has he been uh, tested in that sense? 
he does great with other cats. He's been living with them in our colony room. He's not yet met another dog, but I definitely think he could handle it well. Okay, that's that's great to hear. And he looks like uh, a really awesome guy to uh, to get to know. Um, is there um, anything that that someone should be aware um, about Oscar? I, I know it looks like he he uh, has an issue with one of his eyes. Yeah, he does only have one eye. He had an injury to it that was not properly cared for, so unfortunately, he did have to lose it. But at this point, he works and walks around; everything's normal. Wow. Yeah. Is, is that pretty common? Because I know a couple of weeks ago, I believe. We, we had another furry friend who did have a similar eye injury, and they're absolutely fine, can get around on their own, and uh, enjoys playing just like the rest of them. Exactly. Awesome. So uh, I know that you, that mall location, Amanda, you guys uh, utilize that, it seems like, quite a bit uh, to be able to really connect people uh, with some of these animals if they maybe see the broadcast and they say, you know what, I, I want to check out our friend here uh, is he going to be uh, on display, so to speak, at, at the mall coming up? He is. Uh, we've got a few other friends. The one you were referring to earlier is Miss Whiskers with the one eye. She's here as well. Um, we've got a couple of friends, Thomasina, Sky, Isaac, Ginger, and Gypsy here. Got the whole crew set up and ready to go. Awesome. And I see you've got some merch, too, if uh, somebody maybe wants to uh, buy a, a the Humane Society t-shirt, I, I imagine all that funds and everything really helps taking care of these animals and doing the great work you guys do. Absolutely. Every penny goes right back to these guys. Yeah. So certainly, uh, again, if you want to learn more about any of the animals of the shelter or any of our uh, furry friends, all you got to do is log on to chqhumane.org. Uh, uh, Oscar, Amanda and Brian behind the camera. We appreciate you guys uh, coming on today. And uh, it looks like he's, he's ready to play right now. It seems like he's, yeah. he's ready to just go. <laughs> Have you ever let them go in the mall? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could see maybe, maybe he'll run into a family. You never know. They'll, they'll take him home. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. I think Thank you need you to guys. play uh, of catch with us here if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Just, I could, I could see it now. So awesome. Thank you, guys. You have a great weekend. And again, uh, chqhumane.org is the place to go. And and uh, anytime that they're open there at the mall, they they really gives you a great opportunity to to get some hands-on experience uh, with. Uh, the pet before you know any sort of commitment is made and 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 uh, really if you're looking for an animal uh, adopting from the Humane Society one of the best ways to do it I, I'll tell you that firsthand well let's uh, bring back Dakota now for a final look at our weather and I know Dakota you're a fan of uh, adoptable pets as well and I, I, it's such a great segment that we're be that we're able to really in the world that we're in now. I know mm -hmm. we started this pre-COVID and Brian actually came in with some animals. Go live there. I almost think the segment's better now that we're taking you to the animal in their environment. Right. And it's like, you know, unfortunately where I live, I can't have pets. Yeah. So you're going to have you know. to talk to your landlord about that. Maybe we can yeah. change some, some rules or something. <laughs> sure. I mean, if you want to pay more in rent for me, yeah. we'll just take it out of your paycheck. Okay. No worries. Okay. I'll, I'll just uh, just take out the card right now. Yes. Yeah, Max, and we'll just, we'll yes. just make it work. <laughs> yes. Justin makes the big but bucks. But only after I can have a dog. I can't have a dog at my place, too, either. Well, Wish we'll, I could. Work, well, we'll work on it. Uh, something Start a that, petition. Yeah, so something we want you to work on is storm spotter training. Now, uh, this is a morning session tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Now, the spots are limited, so you do need to register weather.gov slash buf slash skywarn. And this is all online, and this is a storm spotter training class. And again, it's only spotters that see down at the ground, and we need more of them. So please, please, please become a storm spotter. We need more. 42 degrees and sunny, seven days, 79. Tomorrow, record is 82. I don't think we'll get there. And then it goes downhill over the second half of the weekend with some rain and then say goodbye to those 60s and 70s because they're gone over next week. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, I didn't realize they took the Weather Center camera, so I was sitting like this. <laughs> you're, so. you're chilling. That's right. You're it's chilling. Friday. We're just chilling, folks. Just chilling. Just, just take it all off. Just Woo! Woo!
right, dun, da -da. Thank you. Dun, da -da. They're cutting away from us. He's alive. Look at the lake. Better picture than we are. Uh, that's going to do it for <laughs> us today. Enjoy the, the little bit of sun that we're going to have. And of course, if you missed anything we talked about, it's really easy to stay connected. Just download the WNY News Now mobile app. Uh, we've we got reporters on, uh, on the go all the time keeping that thing uh, updated. We're back here Monday. Hope to see you then.